but let me take a second to say thank you you know um everything you got going in your day with your training um you know whatever it is else you have going just want to say thank you for taking a second out to join me here um this platform is for athletes like yourself so we highlight track and field athletes who want to get to know a little bit more about you your journey what you've been through get some tips and tricks, you know, from you, um, and your plans after okay. track and field as well. So with that being said, let's kick this thing off. So first thing I want to know is what is your track story? How did you get started running track? Why okay, okay. are you I running track? I got two stories. So I remember I went to a private okay. school. I'm from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So shout out Winston-Salem. Uh, I went to a private Christian school in second grade and I had ran track. That was my first time ever running track. And all I can remember from that track meet is I ran the 100. I was hyped up off Gatorade. And I was running. And I looked to my left, looked to my right. And the kids by me, they were, like, running with me. And then they just blew by me. But it was, everything was a blur. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. Like, I refused. I lost. I was, I'm not doing this again. I raced my cousin. She was older than me. She beat me. It was just, like, a lot going on. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, my older cousin. Like, yeah, girl. it was crazy. It, right, oh, it was crazy. It was yeah, so Ooh. imagine, imagine a seven-year-old. Nah. So um, I remember being like sixth grade, and a friend of mine, he was like, "You're fast," because I was always the fastest kid in elementary school. Once I left that that private school, and so he was like, "You can run fast. You can run for a long time. You should go for distance." So when seventh grade rolled around, he was I, I was like, cool. So I ran the eight in the mile. Realized it was not for me. I, I, I quit track. That was the second time I quit track. I quit track. I said, nah, I'm not doing this no more. But the coach, he pulled me to the side. He was like, you weren't fast enough to make it to city county, yada, yada, yada. And you can try again next year. Oh, till, till at this point, I'm like, what, 11, 12? That hurt my ego. So I spent the whole summer with my dad working out, um, doing push-ups, lifting weights, and running. And so I came back, eighth grade, I decided, you know what, I want to run the one and the two. When I tell you, <laughs> I used to push the blocks. Like, I, was, I didn't know what I was doing, but I used to push the blocks. And the, and the team manager who used to hold the blocks, um, would, he would just fall back. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was going. So my coach, ironically enough, he threw me in the 100 and the 400. Now, I did not know what that meant so um i ran the one i'll drop like at the time 12 11s and then come back around the 400s and i never knew the time in the 400 because nobody would announce it until one day i ran 54 and i i i didn't know how good i was at the 400 until i was about to run and everybody in one of the heats or one of the races was like oh yeah he's fast and i was like what i used to just get out and run <laughs> to run the whole lap and just hold on for dear life so when they said, oh, I was fast, yeah, I, I just didn't know. No plan. Just I, out there running. And it was like my favorite event with. because I was good at, I was really good at it. It wasn't like, you know, the hunters all showboaty, you know, the divas of it, the sprinters. But the 400 was a little bit different. So when I ran 54, I started getting recruited to run AAU, started getting, you know, a lot more attention. I was the fastest kid in middle school. It was a lot. So I was like, hmm, I actually might be good at this. So I remember I had my middle school track meet where I ran the 400 for the first time. Um, you know, I had like, all the attention on me and I got sick. And I did not, I, I came through the first 200. I probably PR through that at the time. And like, I just hit a wall. But I said, when I finished, I was like, yo, I'm meant for something better, like something greater. <laughs> like it was crazy. So I ran, I ran track all through high school um, and everything. Hmm? What high school did you? What uh, I went to high school. Did Ronald you? Wilson Reagan High School? Yeah, yeah, it's in Pofftown, North Carolina. Actually, I went to the same high school that Craig Ingles went to. Yeah, yeah when I was a freshman, he was a senior, and I remember walking by Craig and seeing Craig one day. Like he just was like, "Hey, what's up?" Because he knew it on the track team, and I was like, "Yo, he's going to the Olympics." I said, "I'm not. He's not going to be the only one to go." <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. So, I love, I love that. Okay. Um, but so, 
that was you said you started. I ran in my first grade, ever right? track meet in second grade, but I didn't take it seriously until eighth grade. Great. Okay. Okay. So um from second grade to high school, um so I first ran in college, what college did you run for? And then I transferred to Western Carolina. That's a whole story. <laughs> Okay. Why did you, um, Why did you transfer? If you don't mind me asking, I'm just gonna be honest. I was not performing. I left the state of North Carolina as the 4A runner up in the 400. Um, so we only have four like we only have four divisions. So it goes 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A. So I was the runner up. I uh, went to Hampton University, like thinking, oh, I ran 48 out of high school, 22, 22, one out of high school. So I was thinking, oh, I'm about to go to Hampton University. You know, coach have coached Olympians, things of that nature. So I'm thinking, oh, this is about to be great. Get there, and they throw me in the 4-8 group. And I, I am dying and struggling. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a speed 400 runner. He was like, no, you're skinny. You're built to run the 8. And I was like, trust me, I did it in middle school. I'm not built to run the 8. So, <laughs> so I started running 51s, 50s, and running 22 fives. And so what happened was I ended up breaking my – pulling my hamstring, coming back a um, couple months later from that injury because if you know me, I'm, I'm going to figure out a way um, from injuries. And then I ended up breaking my foot. I broke the third metatarsal, and I can actually, honestly, I couldn't even tell you which foot it is. And that was like 2016, 2017. So from breaking my foot, the coach told me – he said uh, – he went for three different excuses to why he was taking my scholarship. He went from. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Pause, pause. How did you break your foot? We're not just going to skip by that. Like, you didn't just say what you said because something happened there and then the Honestly, scholarship I have was taken. No How did idea. you break your foot? I, I, I genuinely do not know. Like, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. So, I ran with a guy from Kenya who who's extremely fast 200 runner from Kenya. And I used to, like, I was running with him one day and I was just, like, had this pain in my foot. But I would still like push out and, and beat them and everything. But I was, it was like my pain in my foot only stopped hurting when I'm running. So I was like, hmm. I had my girlfriend at the time who was an athlete at Hampton University as well. She did like a stress fracture test on me because I asked her to do it because I, I was doing it myself and I pinpointed the issue. But I, I, I can lie to you, and I don't know what happened for me to break my foot. To this day, I just assume I was applying a lot of force to the ground and that's what happened. But I, I could not tell you. Was, bro. Yeah, so, Makes sense. so to get to the three excuses. Yeah. So, so it went from um, he's taking the men's team to a new direction. Um, I wasn't performing. So, you know, uh, you know, you got to go. Hurt my soul. <laughs> so I decided to fight the situation because I didn't feel like that was a fair situation. You know, I, that man would go tell me run three miles. I'll go run three miles. You know what I'm saying? Like that man would tell me to do a backflip. I would do it. <laughs> not knowing how to do it without doing it. Because, you know, I believed in what he was trying to do. Could have been like, broke your foot. Just right, back right. Foot, just listening to coach, trusting him. Now, okay, and so um, he said he ta he's taking the, the program in a different direction. You weren't performing. That was the first excuse. Um, so, you, and so you had the opportunity no, to transfer no, no, to so another this school. This was an option. So he gave me an option of coming back as a walk-on and earning my scholarship back. Or... If I do transfer, there was all these like stipulation and rules that I would I couldn't transfer within the same conference. I couldn't, you know, it was a lot. It was a lot. So for me, for me, I'd have, I'm a man of principles. So I fought the situation to get that like ban, like that that all those stipulations removed because I didn't feel like it was a fair, you know, not even just trade, but a, a fair situation on my scholarship and, and my ability to transfer. The print right. Right, right, right. right. The, like, let's get to the second excuse. The second excuse, it was the AD and, and, and athletic, the head athletic trainer. They pulled me, and they were like, you didn't follow protocol. They didn't tell me what protocol was. But they just said, you went to a, a doctor, da, 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 you broke your foot, and you didn't say nothing. I was like, I told y'all everything as it was going. So that was the excuse number two. So excuse number three was I was just uncoachable. Yeah, so, so once okay. I actually went to people above both their heads, like all the all the, the whole athletic department, I went above their heads. I got my situation situated where like I could have went to any school, like in the same conference, uh, wherever I wanted to. So I ended up going on a on a journey um, in 2017 where I was a 
applying to different schools. I had applied to UNC Charlotte, shout out to them. I applied uh, uh, to NC State, shout out to them. Um, I, shout, I applied to Western Carolina. I know athletes at all three schools. And ironically enough, I was looking at teams that needed 400 runners. And, and Western Carolina was the only school to actually answer my call. So I looked at it as an opportunity and a blessing because my coach, my high school coach was actually training me. And he said, go to Western Carolina. He told me this in high school, and I was like, I wasn't listening. I was fighting it. But one day in practice, I was like, it got to be God talking to this man. So I was like, I'm going to listen. So they had, but the thing is, they had three 400 runners that all ran 47, right? I told the coach, I said, somebody going to go 46. We're going to go three or something. We're going to make it to regionals. And we're going we're gonna to obviously win conference like usual, but we're going to break some records. I lied to you not. In twenty, I had got there in twenty eighteen, nine weeks of training. I had ran forty seven. Then my teammate after that, he had ran forty six. Nine, nine weeks of training. Nine weeks. Though. That's just grinding. Nine weeks of training. I had went twenty one, all of that. Then come back. Um, we kept we our four by four was was like crazy because we had three forty sevens on the on the, on you know three forty sevens or forty six whatever on it. Dude, we we were going all over the place trying to run four by fours to qualify. I lied to you not at conference. We ran, uh, we ran, I had to run the 400, 100, and the 200. And if you know, uh, like college track, the 400 and the 100 are like right, right on top of each other. So, so, right after doing all of that, we ended up running the four by four. And 309 is not super duper fast, but we broke our conference record and we made it regionals where, where I met. Where yeah, I met the school that took my scholarship. We had to race them in the in the um in our in our yeah. Yeah. We didn't win. And we didn't have our full team, but it was just the principle of the fact that I'm here. I made it to that point. I'm a, somebody believed in I'm me. I'm real quick, yeah. Right. Regardless okay. of what happened, right. somebody believed you're gonna see what I got. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um so that was college. Um so where are you training now? I say this story all the time. Um, I'm training in, in well, Walnut, California at Mount Sac with, uh, not actually at Mount Sac, but through the Sharks athletic program that our coach has, my coach has. He uh, presented the opportunity to me or, you know, blessed me with the opportunity back in 2021. And I figured a way through hustling, working, and training to get myself here. So, oh. And I have not regretted it yet. No. I don't feel like I ill. <laughs> Much, respect. Much respect, man. Okay, so um, you started in second grade. You've ran through elementary school, middle school, high school, um, college, and and you even had some bumps in the road, some hurdles, yes. you know, as we say in our sport. You know, you have transferred from one school to another school. Coach was literally mm -hmm. telling you you're not performing well. Um, you know, that alone has set some people back and taken them off the journey well, that they no longer run on track. So why are you, ooh, are you still running? Like I said, 14 year old me that, uh, that sat there in the blocks and was about to run that, that, that 400 after everybody knows who I am um, in middle school, eighth grade, uh, came up with the idea of, you know, I can, I can go far in this. And I remember, Remember that same year, my freshman year of high school, they asked, like, what do you want to do when you get older? Da, da, da. And I said, yo, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to be a professional track athlete. And from that point on, something in my brain just clicked. And it was like, yo, I found my purpose. And I'm going to do anything by any means necessary to get there. Even if it, even if it takes me longer than the, than the you know, a, a, the quicker road, I'm going to do what I need to do. So I'm more motivated and my profile picture is my baby picture. That individual, that, that little me, you know, that dream that that person created, that's what motivates me. And then I got a little cousin who's like, uh, I, I want to say she's like six or seven. Um, I haven't seen her since 2019. She, I want her to know that there's more, you know. So that's, so that's another motivation of mine as well. Wow, that's deep. I mean, you've moved from your hometown to Walnut, California, yep. to train in Walnut, California. Um, I can tell you 
have such a deep passion to you know for it and you're even inspiring you know family members friends oh, yeah. you know your followers as well um yeah you said you train with the sharks right what is your experience like who is your coach um and what do you have so, planned for this so coming season my experience has been very interesting um to say the least i i've made a lot of friends brothers at this point we're all i feel like we're all in this and, and sisters in this um we're all on the same path um my coach he's the legendary jb i don't know if everybody knows him but the world will know him um he 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 gets people to their goals and their dreams that's that's all i can say <laughs> that is all i can say so the experience has been very interesting because his training is is different from what i'm used to and um it's just and the only thing that's different is is it's a little more intense, you know. So, and, and that's what I need. Like I had different training before in the past um, that was geared to different, you know, levels and motifs. Um, like mainly because I went to a, a school that mainly focused on conference and not nationals. So we always peaked for conference. So it's very different when your coach is taking some. Like literally, I don't. I don't think they talk to each other. But coaches that that my last coach I had is like it's similar workouts. The only difference is it's just a little bit faster. A little bit less rest so it's like tapping into different systems so i'm learning a lot like i literally just coached text my coach today and tell him yo i thank you i needed this workout today like i literally just got over getting sick and, and having covid and i came back and i was able to complete the work this is my least favorite workout we've been doing but complete it at least the majority of it and you know after ha being sick and all of that and still feel like yo like i just know i know what i need to work on <laughs> like before even in all my other workouts in the past i've usually been able to be the guy that has it in the front and in the end not the middle now i'm realizing i got the front and the middle we got to work on the end and that's that's where that's where i'm like okay i i understand the method to the madness now that's dope that's dope i mean that's the whole um point in finding a coach one that inspires you one that understands you as an athlete and you know will help you get better he believes in you so he made that call hey you know sure i did. believe i can help you out for one uh, but he's building on your strengths it sounds like and right helping right. you build on your weaknesses right. as well so, um what are your goals this coming season so I've, wrote, I've written them down last year i've written them down again this year honestly Honestly, my goal is to surprise myself and reaffirm what I'm what what I feel like I'm capable of. And I don't want to throw out numbers because you know, I feel like when we start throwing out numbers, you start chasing after them. But I do believe myself of doing 45 if not faster and 20 20 anything if not faster. And if I have, if he throws me in 100, we got dip and dabble in that. You know, we can definitely see 10-4 faster. So, um, but my biggest thing is not really worrying about the times and just executing and having fun. I love that. Definitely. Don't worry about the time. Right, I mean, right. our sport is measured by time. So, I just time's out the window. But don't worry about times. You are uh, new to this program with this coach. So, you know, uh, in the sense of – your past experience being a freshman in high school, being a freshman in college, you know, you are a freshman, you're right, brand right. new to this whole system, the whole coaching. You're going to give yourself at least four years, you know, in that program. Oh, yeah. So give yourself some time here Definitely. too, you know. I've seen run. you are destined for greatness, but it does take some time for your body to adjust to the program. Um, but it's great that it sounds like you're learning. You know, I hear some progression in, in the plan as well, or in the program already as well. Um, but let's talk about the program. Um, what is your favorite track workout? Something that you've done um, not too far in the past, but, you know, since we're talking about your current coach, your current program, what's one of your favorite workouts that you've Ooh, done since uh, you've been there? That's actually tough because I feel like, um general prep ironically enough, people's worst worst ones they don't like the 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 beginning stages when we were doing horseshoes and um not horseshoes the snake runs i really enjoyed those for some reason you know what i mean like 
being able to turn it up, turn it off, um, and being able to, to work on the, the different energy systems, honestly, that was my, my favorite. I'm, I'm trying to think of other workouts that we've done so, so far because we haven't, I haven't done a lot with him. Like, I've been in his system at least at least a year now because I'm, I was training myself at home with his, with his system, but it's different with him actually physically there. So, like, he gives yeah. the I rest mean, I would give myself is not the rest he will give me. <laughs> so. Also, mm -hmm. the, you know, the feedback, the change, all of that is definitely different. Um, I'm actually a certified personal trainer. I've coached track and field, coached youth, high school. Um, and I still pay and have a coach myself. I've tried to run on my own too, but it's, it's diff It's different having a personal trainer there with you telling you, Hey, you know, you're leaning back, lean forward a little bit more. Your foot is not dorsiflexing. You just can't watch yourself run, lift weights and do it at the same time. You can't time yourself. You know, we try it on the, on, on the watch, uh, go, uh, uh hey. At the time, hey, hey, I, right. look, look, look. it's not I, right. And also, that also well, I trained myself run too, you know? before I even um, came out here. Um, that's when like I, I dropped, I PR'd in my two hundred and all of that. I figured out a way to be able to time myself, and I figured out a way to be able to train myself. Uh, honestly, but even then, I knew I needed a coach. So there, there is that difference. Like, I mean, I'm a personal yeah. trainer as well, so I definitely understand what you're saying, but. You know, being self-aware as a as a track athlete and being um, spatially aware, especially of your body, is very important. And I think I spent a lot of time doing that with myself. That's why uh, the other day, the last time we I did my runs, I realized I wasn't pushing. And then today, it didn't even matter which foot I started on, I was able to push. I was like, what? What's the difference? What's going on? I'm just. It, it was weird. It was honestly weird. But uh, being spatially aware is definitely. Definitely something that I picked up just being by myself, to be honest with you. That's dope. That's definitely something that you should be learning by yourself. We have a, a sport that says, um, or based on the science, running will teach you how to self-organize uh, mm -hmm. or self-reorganize. So in the sense that you will have to learn the most effective way to run. You'll literally adjust and get better at the skill of running as you run more. Um, but now that's your favorite track workout. Um, what is your favorite lifting exercise? You know what? I, I really, it's like I have two. So, um, actually three. Damn. I, I kind of. Okay, do, so you love it, to lift. It's a weird That's thing. Like, I, like, I like to lift, but I also don't like to lift. But my, my biggest, like, I love the power clean. I how, how does that? How does so that work? I understand I like to, the I don't like of to lifting, lift. and I enjoy the activity of doing it. But if I had a choice of lifting versus running, I'd rather just run. <laughs> so, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. What's your so great, uh, I love exercise? power cleans. I I really do love power cleans, okay. but I also love deadlifting. And then a, a, a big Dead thing lift. that I I mean deadlifting and power clean are very similar in like the motion, um, at least the the pickup motion. The other one I do like is front squats, ironically enough, because it kind of helps with the, the loading of being in the block. Mm -hmm. It does, that position. Okay. Um, what is your favorite post-workout meal? We just got done lifting weights, you know, sprinting on the track. We had a crazy 400-meter workout. We passed out dying. We just got home. What's our post workout meal? Ooh, that's tough. That is tough. That is tough. Hmm. See, so I like to cook my own food, so typically. Okay. <laughs> so typically, okay. I like to, I like to go um, make like shrimp alfredo, or something with salmon. So I might do like shrimp alfredo and add some salmon and some spinach on the side. But I, I definitely like to replenish with my proteins and, and some carbs uh, and a lot of a lot of macronutrients. So a lot of like like I said, the spinaches, the spinach and the in the and the pasta definitely help with the nutrient recovery. But most of the time when I get done with a workout, my post meal go to is a smoothie. 
I usually have. <laughs> I, I, I was just about to ask, uh, do you have any tips or tricks um, post workout drink shakes? So, what is in your so post workout? I usually throw uh, spinach in my smoothies, um, bananas, strawberries, blueberries, blackberries on occasions. But the biggest key thing that I put in there is creatine. A lot of people think I need to put creatine as like a pre-workout. But what I learned is it's better for you in certain aspects, for not, not for everybody, but when you're working out and your body's drained, to replenish it with like creatine and protein. And I use creatine specifically because my ATP is low, my body is drained. So when I take it and ingest it, my body's now my muscles are being replenished um, with that natural creatine store, which is going to force me to drink water. So, so I won't be dehydrated. And then when I go back into the workout again, I will have that, cre that creatine store in me. So when I go work and I want to push harder, I can. So, man. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I like that. Okay. We got your favorite post-workout meal. Got your favorite mm -hmm. workout or weightlifting exercise and childhood exercise. Um, now I want to shift a little bit to your plan in general, you know, of, we focus a lot on track and field specifically, but we have lives outside of track and field, goals outside of track and field. We are still people, still humans yeah. as well. You know, we have other interests. So one, what is your long-term plan with track and field? And then after so the sport as well. The biggest thing of what I want to do with track and field and, and, and kind of tailors itself to after is inspire. Um, whatever that means to people. So uh, the, the biggest thing I learned from doing the sport is the sport's a metaphor for life. So it teaches you the ups and downs of life. You're not always going to win. Stuff's going to be difficult, but a lot of it's up here. And so how you respond to it, how you choose to look at it is everything. So in knowing that and learning that, the biggest thing that I wanted, I take away from it is the biggest thing I want to give back. And that is that no matter how you look at life and no matter how, you, how hard something may be, there's always going to be something a little bit harder. There's always going to be something a little bit, you know, not as hard, but there's going to be more for you if you always take the mentality with it. So um, the biggest thing I want to do is once I'm said and done with track, whether that's motivational speaking, whether that's coaching, whether that's uh, training, I, I want to continue to inspire everyday people, whether it's kids, whether it's adults, to, to deep, dive deep and become better versions of themselves. Because without this sport, I don't think I would have been able to achieve a lot of the things that I've been able to achieve um, in it and in, in without it. Like, this sport has disciplined me. This, this sport has, you know, let me see, okay, I want to travel the world. Well, how, is my, how am I going to do that? Okay, this is another, this is the avenue of doing that. Oh, kids, I grew up one, being one of the fastest kids in elementary school, yada, yada, yada. But then when you talk to kids who are in high school, elementary school, whatever, and you tell them who you are, what you've done, they're, they're impressed. Some of them are inspired by that. And I'm like, there's, there's something bigger than me. Like, I brought up my little cousin. Um, she, I don't think she knows much about the rest of the world uh like sports wise whatever 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 but i do know when she sees me she gets happy and she gets lit up so to know that her cousin it has or is it achieved or is going to achieve certain things i know that's something that that she will cherish and she, i know she'll run around and brag about it it's not meant for me to go to run around and brag about but i know she will go do it i love that that um, you talk a lot about inspiring, um, whether it's peers, family, friends, um, or the next generation. Who's somebody that inspired you while you were, you know, running in second grade, middle school, high school, or college? So, second grade, I didn't really have an inspiration. Middle school, I didn't really find out much. Like, I started doing more research on track, and I went through, like, the typical... Oh, I was introduced to Usain Bolt. So I went through the typical athletes, you know, things of that nature. Um, are we talking about athletes? We're just talking about people in general. Oh, uh, shoot. It could be, it could be both. Okay. If you have okay. somebody, so, if you're a parent. But, 
I just know that, you know, right. you're big on inspiring. So did, did you have inspiration? Is that why you want to contribute and give it to the next generation? Mm -hmm. Or was there a lack of inspiration? And, you know, you want to fill it's that gap for other like people as well. Things. So one, back in 2015, like I had inspiration from like multiple different, different people. Um, like I used to go, like I said, I went through the all the track athletes, you know, Carl Lewis, Usain Bolt, all them. Like I was going through, and then I watched Wade Van Niekerk break the world. Well, I watched Wade Van Niekerk run 43, 43, 48. And I seen he was built like me. I seen that he was like, and that, we don't look the same, but it was somebody that was, that was very similar in, in build. And I was like, yo, that, that right there inspired me to continue to keep pushing. Seen Andre DeGrasse run at nationals in 2015, that inspired me. And those were people that I really know a lot of. Those people inspired me in track. And then, but what really pushed me was, I come from a city, and I say this all the time, I come from a city of Krispy Kreme and Wake Forest and big tobacco, but people live there and they die there. Like they're born there and they die there. And there's not too many strong inspirations. We got Chris Paul, yeah, but that's, that's, that's one person. So for me, my thing was, I got to get out of here. This is a trap. <laughs> so my inspiration was to, to leave. But the person who brought me there, my mom, uh, actually both my parents, but my mom, ironically enough, she had me at 27, lost her mother, lost her great aunt, and she was in her doctorate's program. By 29, she got her doctorate degree and had a two-year-old baby. That woman to me is super powerful. And that's, that's inspiring. Yeah, that's and then I got my dad who has been to Desert Storm, survived that. My dad came, went back overseas and he uh, went to Iraqi Freedom, survived that just so I can go to school. So those two people, beyond anything else, like in my immediate inspirations, those, those, those two people really, truly have inspired me um, to, to see bigger and push for more. Like, I tell my mom on a regular basis, I'm like, you created a monster, you just don't know it. Like, the fact that she did what she did, that's powerful. And then my dad adding the discipline from the military onto it, I was like, Dad, you don't know that everything that you taught me that I didn't like as a kid helped inspire me to be who I wanted to be and, and, what, and what I want. My dad taught me, in order to get what you want, you got you to gotta work hard, the old mentality, but you got to be disciplined in it. You got you to gotta, you gotta put the effort into it. So... When I'm at practice and I'm struggling or something's hard or difficult, I don't tell myself it's difficult. There's plenty of times at practice I don't even count. I just do the work because of what I was wired to do from the two people that inspired me the most. That's dope. Okay, that's deep there. Okay. Um, then what's something that you would tell yourself looking back as a kid What's something you you would you wish you could have told yourself you could have told yourself, or um, something that you know you would tell somebody in second Ooh, grade, see, third I, grade. You know it's crazy. I read that question multiple times, <laughs> and I answered it. and And this is a different spin on it, but uh, and I'm gonna answer it the way that you asked. But the question when I originally seen the question, uh, what I would wish that told myself as a kid is thank you. Because that little kid came with that idea. And I'm still to this day at 25 years old have figured out a master plan to get it done. <laughs> but what would I tell a kid, uh, a young kid, whether they're in second grade, middle school, high school, if you believe you can do it, you can. If you believe you can't do it, you can. It, it's, all about, it's all about your perspective on it. And it's all about your drive to complete whatever you put in your head. I, I've told too many kids, because I've been a substitute teacher as well in this process, I've told too many kids that they can be who they want to be as long as they believe in themselves enough. And the biggest thing out of my entire story is I bet on me. And nobody, when people didn't believe in me, I was still out there doing what I needed to do. So the biggest thing is if you're going to take a risk, Dive all the way in. What did Nipsey say? Uh, all money in. All money in. 
So bet on yourself. That's the that's the biggest thing I can say because only you know what you are capable of. You may not know how you're gonna get there, but if you know you can get there, it's just a matter of continuing to put in that effort and that work behind it. That's deep. That's deep. Wow. Okay. Well, um, I couldn't. Have, I couldn't have said it. You know, any better myself. Couldn't have ended this any better myself. Uh, but thanks again for stopping by, taking the time out of your day to sit down and have this conversation with me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, how, how can we support you? How can we follow you? What do you have coming this, you know, this, so this coming you season? Follow, follow my, anybody that's paying attention can follow my Instagram. It's King X Duma. Um, just don't follow my Twitter. <laughs> Um, but you can follow my Instagram, King X Duma. I don't post as much uh, track related stuff because I haven't gotten into my season yet. Um, I, I, I'm going to start to do a little bit more. Got some stuff work in the works. Um, I, I am doing motivational, uh, not monologues, trying to you know explain some things that I've experienced in life and the positive side of it, and as well as the negative side of it. Um, once the season starts, that's when you're going to see a lot more of the ups and downs, the good and the bad of my results with practice, not practice, but of, of meets and things of that nature and how this journey's going. Because uh, I'm one of those people, once I'm at practice, I'm at practice. Like, like I, I can't, I, I don't think about, my phone goes away. I might have my phone on me all day, every day and on it. But at practice, that hour and a half, two hours, that's not my priority. And so, um I need a, I need, <laughs> excuse me, I need a cameraman, honestly. But uh, definitely, definitely going to start posting more when the season starts. Oh, all right. Well, thanks again um, for no coming by Trackletics Live. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in with us. Um, please take a second to follow Chase. Um, follow his, you know, career this track season. I'm wishing you were healthy. Season with plenty of PRs, plenty of PRs. I want to see fashion records for the 400, um, you know, making it to the trials, USA's, Olympics when they come around as well. Oh, I appreciate I it. Thank you, the best, you the, thank you for the podcast interview, all that.